Have you experimented with loading only one limb or one side of the body? Tom, that's a great question. It's really interesting. Some of the programs I also work with are Paralympics. I train and work with uh, many uh, Olympic gold medalists in that area in multiple disciplines across the 100 to 200 jumps. And the reason I'm mentioning them is uh, often they have uh, unilateral issues. Um, uh, able-bodied sprinters and athletes have it as well. And we do see value in it. Uh, in the Paralympic sports, it's critical. They, are, they have such unique balances. I mean, somebody's literally missing a limb. And so we've had coaches experiment with putting it on a small part of the portion of remaining limb that might be there, a stub or whatever it is to help balance load. Um, and, and, and it's as simple as understanding balance. One thing we do find when we're loading unilaterally, and, 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 I'll, and I'll share this with you because let's take a sport like tennis. We do a lot of loading, golf, tennis, racket sports, one throwing, NFL kicking. And when you do load one side, there's a tendency to create an over imbalance. So what we find also when we load unilaterally, let's take an issue with somebody who's maybe not generating enough force, we'll stick to speed. You're looking at a single leg where there's a single leg weakness or a arm weakness. 100% you could put some light loading into that weak leg and get them to work on that and focus on that uh, to help bring that discrepancy up. And we do this a lot in the rehab situation, especially in the return to play. When somebody's got an ACL or an MCL or whatever it might be, they'll do a lot of single leg loading to help specific strengthening of that. But if you're looking at it to move it into really high speed movement, you have to be careful about unbalancing mechanics. So we have sort of a two to one, a three to one ratio we use. That is, if you've got an athlete and you're going to load a few hundred grams on one side that you want them to focus on because there's a weakness or an imbalance, you sometimes have to conjure or counter load a small around in the range of about 50% or 30% of the other side to keep the system balanced. As an example, let's say a person's got a weak right leg and you can see it coming out of the blocks and they're just not generating the same speed. They're not getting the same aggressive motion out of that and you want to work that. And so you're going to use a load of say three, four, 500 grams on a sprinter on the leg, maybe disperse throughout the whole leg. Well, it's really important you add it maybe 100 to 200 grams on the other leg, not because it needs the same conditioning, but because the system needs balance. And that's a very normal part of the process. And, and it's a great question. And so we have done work in that. Those are the things we're finding. Focus on, rem remember, the system is really balanced, right? It's even like those wheel weights. Put a small weight one place, but they actually have to put another small weight on another spot to create that balance. And it does sound complex, but the thing about oxygen is it's a feeling. And people connect to feeling really quickly. So coach with an athlete working on those areas in a single session, we'll figure it out. As long as you take those guidelines and, and, um, and, and, and focus on, like I said, sort of a three to one or a, 50, a, a two to one ratio, just keep the system balanced if you do go single limb loading for a specific issue. And if it is related to para and that, again, remember they've had a lifetime maybe without a limb. So you just have to work on that balance. But we see tremendous value in it, especially in injury situations and return to play. Definitely, it becomes a great solution for unilateral problems, as long as you keep the balance. We have a new 